we warmly welcome you to another edition of JW Broadcasting. And this broadcast is historic. In what ways? Well, think about this. The first broadcast on this station was in October of 2014. It is hard to believe, but seven months have already flown by. That means that each member of the governing body has had the opportunity to host one of our monthly programs. And we are now starting over again. This documentary will assure us of Jehovah's love for everyone. Yes, this is the May program of JW Broadcasting. The best of the first fruits would truly honor Jehovah. And the Greek term for first fruits comes from a root word having the basic meaning of primacy or preeminence. Again, the idea, the best we have. Proverbs 3.9 also indicated that we can honor or show respect and appreciation for Jehovah with our valuable things. Jehovah is truly worthy of all the honor we can give Him. Not only do we owe it to Him because He is our Creator, He is worthy of it because of the kind of God He is. But what are the valuable things with which we can honor Jehovah? What first might come to mind are our material possessions, our finances. Well, that is true. But now, I would like to address the valuable things that may have first come to mind. Material possessions or financial giving and support. As you know, for over 130 years, this organization has never solicited for funds, and it is certainly not going to start now. We don't send out monthly statements to each of Jehovah's Witnesses specifying a dollar amount that should be submitted to finance the work worldwide. Most donations, in fact, are contributed anonymously. Over the years, I have told various Bible students that a person could attend our meetings for 20 years and never put a penny in the contribution box, and we would not know it. Jehovah, of course, would know it, but we would not because the donations are anonymous but from the heart. We don't know who gives what. But for a certainty, any donations received do not line anyone's pockets and are not misappropriated. They are all used in supporting theocratic endeavors worldwide. The governing body prayerfully and sincerely endeavors to be not only the faithful slave, but also the discreet slave in wisely managing the master's resources. And please, dear brothers and sisters, pray for Jehovah to help us to be successful in being not only faithful, but also discreet. But often a member of the governing body will be heard to say, in spending Jehovah's money, we have to be more careful than we are in spending our own money. And that is truly how we feel about the matter. Yet, as you can well imagine, millions of dollars are required each month to finance the colossal kingdom work that is being supported by this organization in some 239 lands. Where does all of the financial support come from? Largely from you, dear brothers and sisters. Most funds come from what you voluntarily put in the contribution box in your kingdom home. Yes, 
that little box with a slot that is labeled Worldwide Work is primarily what finances all of the theocratic initiatives that have been implemented. Of course, there are many other ways to contribute, as explained usually in the November issue of the Watchtower each year. Sometimes we may feel a little shy to talk about the financial needs of the organization. That is understandable because we in no way want to be categorized with other organizations, religious and otherwise, that coerce their supporters to donate. However, because all of us have the privilege to donate funds, we would like to let you know something about our current situation. Then you can respond as your heart impels you. As you might have sensed, I am not shy about this subject. And why not? It is because we have many scriptural examples of Jehovah's faithful servants making known the financial needs of the congregation. Only when supporters of the kingdom know the needs can they respond accordingly. The governing body very much feels the urgency of accomplishing as much as we possibly can in behalf of kingdom interest, knowing that the great day of Jehovah is near. So in an effort to keep you informed of the support that is needed for this great work, I have the following information to share. We have looked forward to this next fiscal year and projected the expenditures for all of the theocratic initiatives we are scheduling. In doing the math, we found that the amount of money flowing out will be much greater than the amount of money that we have coming in at this time. Well, why is that? Does this represent a lack of appreciation for spiritual things? No, absolutely not. To the contrary, we are witnessing unprecedented enthusiasm among the brotherhood for all the spiritual bounty that is coming our way. We have up-to-date Bibles and an abundance of printed literature. And there's so much appreciation for the new and continually improving JW.org website. There is also excitement about public witnessing using literature carts and with such great success. No, the financial circumstance has nothing to do with a lack of spirituality or appreciation. However, there are some facts that we want to make you aware of. For one thing, the financial needs in the field have accelerated at a pace unlike any time in the recent past. A recent analysis of the need for Kingdom Halls here in the United States showed that some 1,600 new Kingdom Halls or major renovations are needed, not sometime in the future, but right now. And worldwide, we are in need of more than 14,000 places of worship. Additionally, please think about this. Today, how many publishing companies print publications in the many languages that Jehovah's organization does? The answer, none. And why is that? is because they cannot make a financial profit. We, however, are accelerating our method of translating publications into indigenous languages. Hence, we have another reason we need to increase our finances. We just felt that you dear brothers and sisters 
needed to be made aware of these expenditures that we're facing in the coming months and years.